So in the next few videos, we're going to make a few more modules here to kind of round out our infrastructure, including some modules for our servers. We're going to do some modules for our private network, or VPC, and then a module for an RDS database so we can kind of see how we can connect various services and set them up within Terraform. And from there, I'll show you how to do some more advanced stuff with Terraform configuration. In other words, how to better organize your Terraform configurations for ways that might work a little bit better with growing infrastructure and infrastructure um, configuration that works well in team environments. So the first thing we're going to do here is actually create our uh, module used for networking. And within AWS, that basically means we're creating a VPC, a virtual private cloud, virtual private networks. And we're going to do some related stuff to that. Now, this is not a course in AWS. This is a starter course on Terraform. So I don't really want to get too granular into the AWS services we're talking about here. We will in future courses. But I do want to cover what a VPC is really quick so there's less confusion when you see what I'm doing. A VPC is a virtual private cloud. It's just your virtual private network. And that is a private network in which you put your servers and resources into. So when you spin up a server, like an EC2 server, or if you're running containers or um, Lambda functions, they mostly will get placed into a private network, either the default that comes in your account or one we create. And in our case, we're going to create one. And that's a private network for your resources. So your private networks can have one of these three private network IP address ranges, the, the 10.0 ones, the 172s, and the 192s. And essentially, you're limited to... Um, the slash 16 CIDR block for, for your IP addresses here. And that means you'll have 65,536 IP addresses to work with, so you can potentially create that many servers or whatever per uh, AWS VPC that you create. Slash 16 is the biggest you can create, and slash 28 is the smallest you can create, which is just 16 IP addresses. So you can create an IP address range. It can be slash 16 or smaller, and in fact, there are very good reasons to do smaller, but I won't bother talking about that just yet. And then you decide how to carve up your IP address space, your private network. So what you do for that is to create subnets. So instead of looking at docs anymore, we can head over to our AWS Management Console. I'm going to go to the VPC section. And we'll see, I only have one here. And the one here that we see in my region, Ohio, US East 2, is this VPC. It has this IP address range. So we see it's slash 16, so it's the maximum available for this private network IP address range. And AWS actually knows it's the default VPC. It's the one that gets created for you when you spin up an AWS account. There's one VPC per region, one default per region. So it is this big IP address, which has you know 65,536 IPv4 addresses in it. Okay, so within a region within AWS are availability zones, and each availability zone within a region is a separate physical building that is roughly located in the same geographical area. So Virginia has something like five or so. Um, that number might be wrong, but whatever. Uh, availability zones, US East 2, Ohio has three availability zones. And that means there's like three separate physical buildings somewhere that are you know data centers. Each subnet you create for your VPC, in other words, some subset of IP addresses here, goes to an availability zone. So we can see my default VPC has three subnets. That is not a coincidence. That's because there are three availability zones in US East 2 in Ohio. So we can see they're divided up like this. Um, this address space, 31, 32, 31 here, 31, 16, and slash 20, which means there's 4,091 available IP addresses in these subnets. We can see that each subnet is in a different availability zone. So 2A, 2B, and 2C. So our default VPC has created one subnet per availability zone, and they have route, route tables, network ACLs, other stuff we're not really going to get into here too much other than to show really quickly so you sort of know what's going on. Okay, so we have a subnet. I'll just click into one. It has a route table. Uh, it's part of this VPC that we're looking at, the default VPC. It's a default subnet, so AWS knows which ones are defaults. And there's really nothing else going on except for a route table. Each subnet has a route table, and a route table tells the network traffic where to go and how to get routed. So if I'm going to send network traffic on a server to a private network IP address, it's going to get targeted locally, so it's just going to stay within the local private network. If I target something on the outside internet, like if I do a curl request from within my server to google.com, 
That's going to go to the outside internet um, on basically anything that's not the private network. And that is going to get routed through an IGW, an internet gateway. And the internet gateway is assigned to this route table, and the route table is assigned to the subnets. And each subnet actually has the same route table in our case. And this internet gateway is how our servers talk to the outside internet and how the outside internet talks to our servers. Um, don't worry about the specifics of this. Just know that if there's an internet gateway assigned to this route table and the route table is assigned to the subnet, then um, servers that are put into this subnet, into this VPC, are going to be able to talk to the outside internet. And the outside internet is probably going to be able to reach the server. So these are what we call public networks, public subnets, because the outside internet can talk to them and they can talk to the outside internet. You can also have private ones that don't have an internet gateway and therefore don't get assigned an IP address, a public IP address. They only get assigned the private network IP address, and they can only talk to the private network. They can't talk to the outside internet, and the outside internet can't talk to them. But if you have a situation where a server needs to talk to the outside internet, but you don't want the outside internet talking to the server, then you add a server to a network here that can, you know, it's in the private network, and then you assign it, instead of an internet gateway, a NAT gateway. And the NAT gateway network area translator allows network traffic to the outside internet to go through the NAT gateway and then able to make the request. So I can do a curl request to google.com or like I can do an app get install to install some software from a server that's only in the private network if it has a way to talk to a NAT gateway through those route tables. Okay, I'm not going to go too much into that. I'll show you what that looks like though because we're going to be using and creating these things um, in our next module, the VPC module within our Terraform configuration. All right, so the high level of this is we're going to make a new VPC. We're going to give it some address space, a range of 65,536 IP addresses that we can assign out. We're going to carve up that VPC into separate subnets. Each subnet will get their own little range of, of IP addresses that they can use. There's probably going to be two subnets that I create per availability zone, and I'll show you why I make that decision. Then we'll make an internet gateway and a NAT gateway so that uh, some networks can talk to the outside internet and be public networks. And some will just be only in private networks and stay private, except they'll use the NAT gateway so that they can talk to the outside internet if they need to make requests or install software or something like that. The other thing we're going to do is create some security groups, um, not network ACLs, but just regular old security groups. And these are basically firewalls, except they're not called firewalls. They're not configured in your servers. They're configured on the network layer within AWS, but they're essentially things like allow port 22 in and disallow anything else that kind of thing, just like a firewall. So in our next video, we're going to go ahead and start creating this VPC. Some of the things I just said will hopefully make sense if they don't make sense to you already. And when we get into the Terraform configuration specifically, I'll go ahead and explain to you what we're doing there as well.